Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's time to declutter single eyeshadows. Again. <laughs> I don't think my first pass was so bad. I'll link the video in the description in case you missed it, but I think I can do better. So today I'm trying to keep my end goal in mind, and that is I am trying to downsize my makeup collection to make it easier to enjoy, easier to access, and easier to clean. I want to give myself more time to enjoy fewer beautiful things. Because I have been neglecting my single eyeshadows of late, and I think the main reason might be because I'm just overwhelmed by the sheer number of them. So hopefully condensing my collection down to a more manageable number will solve that problem and get me using them again. But since I am pretty obsessed with that dirt we call eyeshadow, I have a feeling that there are going to be some pretty difficult decisions today, which means there might be a very in-depth swatch fest heading our way. <laughs> so maybe you'd like to declutter along with me, or perhaps this is just a good video to fall asleep to. So let's switch to the overhead camera and get swatching. Welcome to round two and a half of my single eyeshadow declutter. If you missed the first one, I will link that for you. But today I thought it'd be good to start with a status update because some changes have taken place in the meantime. So when I first started this process, I began with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight full eyeshadow palettes, just chock full of single shadows. These two palettes are now going. Every single shadow in here is being decluttered. So let's start off with something positive by taking a look at how much I've done already. These are all leaving. If you saw my last declutter, you might have remembered that these shadows had all been put in the potential keeper pile. And what happened was I sorted through all of the shadows I had because I wanted to make this declutter a little bit more organized than the last one. And so I wanted to put all my similar colors together. And when I did that, I just realized I did truly have doubles of something. So I put the doubles in here that were just immediately apparent where I didn't have to do any swatching. There's still stuff left to do, but these have all gone. And I think there's a couple of extra round shadows in here too that have also left the fold. So this has been updated. I have gotten rid of more since the last declutter that you saw, but all of these shadows will be leaving. And all of these shadows will be leaving. And in the meantime, I also decluttered this one and these and these here. So I did do a little bit more decluttering when I was organizing my shadows for this video, but basically all of these will be leaving the fold as well. So now we are down to six palettes. But here's the thing with these Lethal Cosmetics shadows. I tend to think of and use these two palettes the same way I think of and use my Natasha Denona eyeshadows. Yes, these are single eyeshadows that I use to build palettes, but I also think of these as palettes in their own right. This here is kind of like my own version of the Circo Loco palette, and this one I just always think of as my Lethal Neutrals palette. Maybe I should give it a name. We can call it Lethal Dirt. <laughs> This is my Lethal Dirt palette, and this is my Lethal Clown palette, I guess. <laughs> but I think what I'm going to do is, for now, I'm going to put these with my normal eyeshadow palettes, because I use these as palettes. So why not keep these in the same place I keep my other palettes? So now we are down to just four palettes, which feels a little bit more manageable. These two little ones live in my everyday makeup drawer, but I'm wondering if I can consolidate these a bit. So let's take a closer look. When I look at these palettes, here's what I see. I see these four ZC shadows, which always make the same look for me. This is like my own little quad. It's personalized. I use it all the time very specifically, so I wouldn't want to give this up. Then I see these shadows, these two here and these four here. And these are from the very first eyeshadow palette that I ever bought. And that was probably about 15 years ago. And what happened was I only owned that one eyeshadow palette for about six years. It was the one and only eyeshadow I ever owned. It's the only eyeshadow I ever used and I used it pretty much every day. And this is what a pan looks like when you use it every day for six years, plus then some. 
Is that weird to anybody else? Is this like the never ending palette or do I just not, <laughs> do I just not apply enough product? I don't know what that is, but this is like a magic pan. I'm just wondering if maybe I should give it up. This was one of my favorite shadows from that palette, as was this, because it's just kind of one of those shadows that you can use for, I don't know, blending out, for highlighting under the brow bone. Um, it's great if I need to bring a little bit of light to my deep set eyes, but I'm just wondering, maybe I should compare these two to some of the other things that I have and see if they're really worth keeping. The same goes with these Kevin Aquan shadows. They're beautiful, but maybe we can do some comparisons. Same here, same here. And then these are also from that original Too Faced palette that I owned. So they are ancient, but I have used them and loved them for years. So it's gonna be, it's kind of hard for me to get rid of these just because they were like my very first ones. Then we have this shadow here, which I believe was perhaps from Morphe. I don't know where it came from, but all I know is I happen to like this shadow. So I use it all the time and I would like to keep it for that reason. These two are also really special. These are Cleona Multichromes. They're their pastel formula and they're just really easy for me to wear and use. And so I wanna get use out of those as well. Then these here are cheek products. And I've of course hit pan on this one. This is the Kevin Aquan Contour Powder in Medium, Kevin Aquan Highlighter in Candlelight. And this is a Lancome blush that was decluttered to me, but all of these are things that I use all the time. So I feel like number one, they're not eyeshadows. So I don't have to think about whether I want to declutter them today. But number two, um, I use them all the time. So I don't feel like there's really a point to getting rid of something like that. So I think what I'd like to do is clean this little palette up and then put my favorites in there. And you know what, while I'm thinking of it, I'm going to think about whether I really want to keep this one because <laughs> it is a pretty typical color for me. So we'll swatch that against some others, but these three are special. So I know that I want to keep these. Let's put the special shades back in here where they can do their special thing. <laughs> and we'll see if there's anything else that needs to go in here. But for now, I'm very happy with having this be my little palette of specials. This one is going to go in back in my vanity for now. It's just gonna be my cheek palette and I will come back to this in my powder cheek declutter. And now we have to make some room so I can go through the big palettes. To prepare for this video, I went through my Viseart palette and rearranged everything. It used to be arranged according to constellations that I used a lot, so kind of like pre-made palettes that I would kind of play with, but now I've taken everything and rearranged it according to color, but I didn't really have time to swatch things. I just kind of did it according to the color as it appears in the pan, but sometimes the colors are very different swatched out around the eye than they are in the pan. So it might help to do some swatching today. See if I maybe have some colors that are duping themselves or that are similar enough that I can get rid of. For example, the first thing that sticks out to me is I have what looks like three blacks. It's not three blacks. Um, this is a warmer based black. This is a cooler based black. And this is actually a charcoal gray, but as you can see, they're pretty similar. So maybe we should swatch them and see if I really need all of them. So let's do the two different undertones first. See, they're not the same. I don't know. Let's see this charcoal one we'll do next to the but see, it's like a warm charcoal. I feel like it's very often that I see cool charcoals, but it's not often that I see a warmer based charcoal. And this is why I end up keeping so much <laughs> because I get so involved in undertone. So this is the sort of thing that I think for me is worth keeping because if I'm putting together a warmer based palette, then I want the warmer based black. But if I'm doing a cooler look, then I would use these because they're not so cool that they look blue on me. They're still neutral. So they make sense. If they were super blue based blacks, I might reconsider, but they're just useful. So, okay, I'm keeping the blacks. 
The next thing that catches my eye is these two shades here. They're also very similar. So let's swatch these two and see if they are different. And I would say, yes, <laughs> they are different because this one is maybe a little bit, I don't know, it's, it's hard to, to describe the differences to me. This one looks a little bit more saturated orange, whereas this one looks a little bit more like a desaturated peach. But look how similar they look in the pan and how different they look on my hand. It's crazy. And what I'm wondering is, when I am going through these, building a palette, am I going to notice the difference? And I think the answer is, at this point in my life, I would probably swatch things out if I was building a palette. So I think the nuance would make a difference to me in this case. Oh goodness, <laughs> this is not going well. My next thought is this white. I have come to realize that white doesn't necessarily look good on me. Off whites are better, kind of warm cream colored whites are better. And this can look pretty stark and extreme. Of course it is a Viseart shadow, so extreme <laughs> is a little bit different. And this does work to brighten. But what I'm wondering is if one of these other whites might do the same thing and just be a little bit better for me. Let's see, build that up a little bit. This one's already a little bit too close to my skin tone, white. It's between these two and, oh goodness. They do look quite similar. And I'm wondering if I could get rid of the starkest one Hmm. I don't often wear white eyeshadow. What do I want to do here? Let's see. I think I'm going to try to part with this. I have my Time Will Tell box and those loose shadow palettes are going in there. So this is going to go in that Time Will Tell box. We'll have a little Time Will Tell pile here. Next! My eye sees these three browns and kind of sees a patch of sameness. So let's watch these and see if any of those look like they could be superfluous. Okay. And here, I feel like they are different. They are. Like this one is more red, this one is more yellow. Are these two here? similar when blended out. Let's see. Yeah, this one's more red by far. And this one has like a softer redness to it. Okay, but do I really need three? Look how the same they are, Stephanie. They are very the same. I want to see if the two outside ones are, are like particularly similar. Are they? No, they kind of aren't. <laughs> oh goodness. Ooh, oh, such details. Am I that detail of a person? Okay, let, let's ask myself that. Am I that detail oriented of a person that I am going to make a palette that will distinguish between those? And the answer it's probably yes, sadly enough. But you know, this is what I do for fun. Like when I'm putting together a palette to go on stage, like it's not just for work. It's also like something I enjoy doing. So is it worth keeping? Perhaps we're not getting very far. See this, this is, oh, I think this is the reason I haven't decluttered my eyeshadows before this, because I just figured if I'm going to make a palette, I want all the choices, but do I really want all the choices? Something inside me tells me <laughs> that I don't. Some Part of me says that I should just take the two lethal palettes and like that should be the size of my single eyeshadow collection. But then I look at all the options and I think of how often I use these and I think, well, that's silly. <laughs> so let's try this one. <laughs> okay, so we've got the Kevin Aquan swatched on my hand here. 
And let's try, let's see, this one looks like it could be similar-ish. Okay. And once again, they're kind of different. <laughs> but this sort of shade is the sort of thing that ends up getting very blended out. And so I think I only need one. So maybe I should just keep the Visi Art because this is always what I grab for. Yes, this will go in the Time Full Tell box as well because I can always take this out and put it in my everyday palette. There's nothing stopping me. Okay, and now as for the ZC shadow, let's look at this one too, because this is also quite normal, everyday, average color. It's not necessarily something that you'd think of as special immediately in the realm of eyeshadow, but let's think of that. Okay, so that's what we have there kind of a warmish color, but not, let's see, maybe this here would be the next equivalent. And if I build that up, okay, they're a little different, but you know what? I, I feel like I'm here to declutter, so let's do some decluttering. And you can see how similar these are. And here's something else I have to ask myself. Am I going to miss these when they're gone? Or am I just going to use what I have and enjoy it and not even remember that I decluttered something? I think maybe that's what I need to keep in mind. Am I going to miss these things? Because if I'm not, maybe they would get more use somewhere else and give someone a whole lot more joy. So let's return to these browns and see what I think of that. Am I going to miss any of these? And I think the answer is these two seem to have a similar undertone. Let's watch them one more time just to make sure. Yeah, those two seem more similar to me than, say, these two. So I think I'm going to get rid of this one. It's kind of arbitrary, but I think we can do that, and I'll be happy. And if I go like this, oh, look, I'll never know it was gone. <laughs> and then I'm wondering about this one. And what I, I mean, look how well that blends out. And what I like is a dark shadow that blends out well. This is pretty dark on me, so maybe what I'll do is I'll slip this in here. And that fits kind of nice, I think. Yeah, I think I like that. Now let's move on to some of these shimmers. I take that back. Let's stick with the mattes for now because it's easier to get those off my hands <laughs> without leaving residue behind. This is also from that Too Faced palette that I got 15 years ago, and it is old, but it has a dip, which for me says something because my eyeshadows never get dips. <laughs> but I used this pretty much every day for six years, and I have kept using it since, and I'm wondering, because I feel like there's nothing all that similar in here. Maybe these two? Let me see. So we've got this here. Very pale, cool, contoury shade. And we got this here, which is brightening, so that doesn't work. Let's see, is there anything else here? I feel like this might be worth putting maybe in here. Because I don't feel like I have anything similar to that one. Okay, then let's take a look at this. This is a great color because it's white, but it's warm. And that's, I think, what I need on most days. So also 15 years old, but still going strong. That's what that looks like. This is one of my favorite mattes. And let's see if this one can hold up. The Too Faced is a little bit more yellow, which I think maybe suits my skin tone better. But the thing is, I, <laughs> this is newer in any case, 
which might be the safer option to keep just because, I mean, makeup does expire. Powder products tend to last forever. I mean, not all powder products, but a lot of them do. So I'm wondering if maybe I should give this one away or not give it away, but maybe toss it just because it is so old. I'm wondering if maybe that's what I should do with this one and keep this because I think ultimately I would just choose one for the eye. What's this one? Yeah, this one is gives me a little bit more something similar to this. So you know what? I think maybe it's time for this one to go. Now, let's see, we've got this deeper brown. But before we do this brown, I think I'm just going to put these in the time will tell bin as well. Let's see, we'll put all the lighter colors together so I can see them. Because I think realistically, I'm okay with just that one. This one is effectively white on me. And I think it suits me best. And this is probably what I'm going to grab for most of the time. So I think that makes sense. All right, now let's go for the darker brown. Maybe these two. So we'll swatch the good old 15-year-old Too Faced, which still swatches like an absolute dream. Next to Viseart. Viseart never swatches all that well, but I'm very aware of that. So I feel like I know how they work on the eye. So the swatches don't matter so much. And here it's the same deal. These two are similar enough. I'm just going to keep the Viseart because it's newer. Okay, now that I've gained some momentum, let's go back to these reddish shadows and just see if I really need both of them. Or if I would miss one if it was gone. <laughs> I have a feeling this one would maybe bring the blue of my eyes out more, but this is a less saturated version, which just kind of suits me in general better. So I think, just to make sure they're the right ones. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get rid of the, the more saturated version. I'll give this one away. And I'll just keep this one because I think that'll end up suiting me personally better because I'm trying to curate and that's what I need to remember here is I always look at these shadows as something that I might need you know to create a palette for a specific outfit on stage but the question is um is it going to suit me like just because I make a palette that 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 looks great in and of itself is that palette that I make really going to suit me. These are my single eyeshadows. The palette has to suit my skin tones. And so I think I need to look at it more that way, which is why I'm kind of wondering about the cooler blacks. Warmer tones tend to suit me in general better. So let's take a look at some of these cool tones. They are still neutral-ish, so I'm not sure that it would be horrible for me to have them, but I do want to take a closer look. Okay, so here we have some really pretty shadows. See, this is the, the thing that always gets me. They're just so pretty. And I do think that I could pull these off. I don't think that they're necessarily something that I couldn't wear. Like this one is the most blue based out of all of them. And so I'm wondering if maybe, I don't know, is this something that I think would suit me in a look that wouldn't just suit an outfit or a stage thing, but would actually suit me? It's a really pretty periwinkle. I always think of it as gray, but it's actually kind of periwinkle. Hmm. And I'm not sure I'm willing to part with that. <sighs> we'll come back to it. So let's take a break and look at these browns here. This one actually looks like it's the darkest. So I'll do this one first, then this one, then this one. Let's see if they're different enough. Okay, those feel, 
very different to me. They probably just look like brown to a normal person, but this one's so much cooler toned. I think maybe that's why I put it next to this one, because this is also a pretty cool toned dark shade. Ah. This is really hard. Why is it so hard? Okay, this one to me is a great contour shade, but it looks a little bit purpley. This one could also be used as a contour, but it's a little bit warm to look like a shadow, but the depth of it is right. And this one is also pretty cool toned. And I think if once this is sheared out, this one and this one would look pretty similar, but this would be the better undertone. So, I think this one is going to go. I just want to swatch them again to make sure. So let me wash off, wash off my hand. So this one is this one, yeah, and this one is this one, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that, I'm okay with that, okay, we're getting there, it's taking some time, and hopefully it's, <laughs> it's not too boring for you, this is why I normally do, would do something like this on my own, because I'm not sure how interesting it is for someone else to sit here and watch me deliberate these really minuscule things, but it's just, this is heart-wrenching for me. It's just it's taking a lot. But you know what's interesting to me? As I'm going through this process and slowly kind of peeling away the layers of the onion and discovering what, what I would be okay with giving away, some decisions are becoming easier. Like now I'm looking at this and just instantly think, this is just too bright. This is not something I need. The pure white is a little bit too cool toned. It's not creamy enough for me. And maybe this would be the better option if it is a warmer pink. So let's take a closer look at this one. And this is like, oh, kind of very barely peachy toned pink. So that is a good option. But I also have this in Viseart. And here's the thing, this is a satin and this is a metallic. So maybe they're not quite equivalent. And wow, that is quite bright, that one. And it looks warmer in the pan, but it's very icy on my hand. And so I'm wondering if I can maybe give this one away as well. So I'll put that there. And you know what? I'll put this in here. And then I have two very similar shades, but very different finishes. I think I'm satisfied with that. Next, let's take a look at this one. This is also a metallic, but it looks kind of similar to a couple things we have here. Maybe those, yeah. So let's swatch this. Very metallic. Once again, a 15 year old shadow that just performs amazingly well. And that's just such a nice, soft, metallic, neutral gold. Let's see. What's this one look like? See, and this one is a little bit peachier, more orangey from Viseart, but it's gorgeous. This one, also a little bit more on the orange side, but gorgeous. Let's see about this one. That one is a little bit on the unimpressive side. That almost feels a little bit dry to me. Like it's not as nice as some of the other busy art shadows are sometimes. Now I just messed it up because I put another swatch over it. Okay, I feel like this one I could give away. This one I think is going to end up looking a little bit lackluster on the eye. And you can't always tell from swatches, but I know busy art shadows. And so this is one that I think is going to end up looking a little bit lackluster on the eye. Let's see. So maybe we can put this one in here. What about this? Another Too Faced shadow, although this one's feeling a little crumbly 
I still really like the color of that, but I think this one is the, the only one that I've tried so far that, that is actually too old. So this is going to go in here with, with my... These are the ones I am, I'm just tossing because I think they're too old to give away. And these are all ones that are a little bit newer, that if somebody wants them, they can have them. There we go. We'll do it like that. Okay, now that we found one lackluster shadow, I know that there's probably a couple more in here, so let's do some quick swatchy swatchy and see. I don't think any of these, none of these felt like that. No, all of those are okay. And we'll try this one as well. That one feels very smooth. That one looks a little bit lackluster, but it feels really smooth. And so I'd have to try this one out on the eye. I actually think, oh yeah, it's already, it's funny, Viseart shadows, sometimes I feel like they need to meld with your skin. This is already melding. Yeah, this, this I think is a good one. All right, but I know there's at least one other lackluster one in here because I had tried it on for my last trip and I was like, ooh, that one's not working so well. Okay. All of those feel nice and juicy. So those are keepers. All of those also feel pretty nice. This one is the same as this. I feel like it's the formula. That one, you need to kind of let it become one with your skin before it starts to do its thing. Yeah, both of those work really nicely. Okay. These two are unspectacular when you swatch them. These are from Sicily, but um, when they're on the eye, they sparkle. It's really weird. Like, this is a perfect example of a shadow that just doesn't swatch well. Like, they look fine. They look normal. But when you put them on your eye, I don't know, maybe if I can get it to focus, you might be able to see the sparkles in there. But yeah, they, they do this like cool sparkly thing and they're definitely worth keeping. So those two from Sicily are keepers. I have a feeling in this row, we might find another one of those shadows, the dusty ones. So let's see. Oh. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Let's try these last two. Yeah, these just feel really, really nice and smooth. So those aren't going to be it either. Okay. But I mean, I guess that's good. You want high quality shadows and that's what I've got. So I'm happy with that. All right, let's try, let's see, we already tried that. That's the Kevin Aquan. So let's go in here. Okay, but when I look at the swatches here, hmm, this one is nice and dark. And this one looks more red, whereas this one is like a little bit more, it almost has like a little bit of purple in it. It's like a, um, I don't know, it's a, just a different undertone. Then this one is, could that one go all over my lid or is that too dark? No, I think that one might be able to go all over my lid and not look too dark. But this one I could definitely put, yeah, I think. All right, but would I miss one of them? That is the question. And I feel like, for the most part, this one I would use as a matte shadow. Do I have another matte shadow equivalent of this? That's something we can look at. This one looks kind of similar to this one. That is not similar at all. That is also, these, these are much cooler tones. So no, that means I would use this one as a matte and it is, pretty original. Although, let's just take a quick look 
at these kind of more red based browns. Yeah, that's different. These are definitely totally different. All right, I guess we're keeping all of them. But here's something we can look at. Are these purples too cool toned? I really enjoy wearing purple on my eyes because I feel like it brings out the green in them, but these are a little cooler toned than what I would typically reach for. So let's see if they're really worth keeping. They are gorgeous. I'm just gonna swatch it with this periwinkle just to see. Yeah, look, I feel like this would just make a gorgeous little quad. Oh, the question is, would I wear that quad? Would I wear that? That is really pretty. But let me put together a warmer purple quad and just see which one I would actually tend to build. So let's do this, this, and this. We'll make this another purple quad and see if that's something I would be more likely to wear. This isn't purple at all. <laughs> I'd probably pick a different shade. But yeah, oh, this is gorgeous, but oh, I, mm, I don't know. I think I could make a beautiful quad out of this for my mom. I feel like she would look so pretty in that. Oh, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, okay, so this will go to her. She, it's nice because she's got a different undertone than I do. Um, and so a lot of times when things don't work for me, they look really nice on her <laughs> and vice versa, which is why I get so much stuff from her. So, oh my gosh, we're giving the periwinkle away. That's crazy. Okay. All right. But I, it, look how pretty that is. Isn't that like, don't I make a good palette? I make a good palette. Boring, but good. And you know what? Now that I've had some time to ponder, I think between these two, they look so similar but I would always reach for this one because it just has a little bit more oomph to it. So this one can go as well. Look at me. <gasps> oh my gosh. This might not seem big to someone else, but I feel pretty proud of this. <laughs> I wonder if I can get rid of anything else. We haven't looked at this yet. This was like my number one most favorite shadow from that Too Faced palette. I don't know if it was called like the Naked Eyes palette or something. I will put up a image of it if I can find it. But this one, this was like what I would put all over my mobile lid and nothing else on most days. And I wore it. I'm, I'm, I'm taught probably 300 times a year for six years. This is the never ending pan. It's amazing. All right, and when I swatch it out, it's still just as good as, it, as it's always been. See that shine? It's just like, ooh, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh. So yeah. Do I have anything in here that is like this? That is not. That is not. That is not. That's definitely not. I don't. I guess we'll put that over here. <laughs> Okay, and once I clean my hands off, maybe we'll take a look at these two purples. Okay, purple number one, purple number two. We'll swatch them here and here, I guess. Okay. And both of those are wearable to me. Like, I feel like this one is more blue-based, but it's neutral enough. Like, it's not really blue. Like, these are very blue like when I look at this in comparison do you see how much more blue that is I feel like but do I need both of them that is the question if I'm doing a more vivid do I need both of them Stephanie do you need both of them and the answer is no so now the question is which one of them do I want to keep and which one of them do I want to give away and because this one has a little bit more blue to it, I will put this in the purple palette for my mom. There we go. Now she gets a quint. We'll put that here so you can see it. There we go. 
That'll be my mom's quench. Now I spy with my little eye something that is similar to this. So let's take a look at this and compare these two. I think this one's probably going to be pinkier. This is Too Faced. This is Marc Jacobs. Let's see. Yeah, the Marc Jacobs is definitely pinkier. And the Too Faced is probably oh, more of my color, maybe. So we don't need both of those. We'll put that one in there. When I look at this shade right here, this is a very in and of the moment color. It's that Barbie pink, baby pink, which is very bubblegum pink. And it's really pretty and I have used it in a lot of palettes, but I'm wondering, because I have another pink that's just a little bit warmer in undertone and that would suit me better. So I'm thinking maybe I can put this in, give that to my mom too as like a little spark of something something. I don't know if she'll want that because she's not super into pink eyeshadow, but it suits her <laughs> because I've done her um, eyeshadow before with pink and it looked so nice. And I think she was happy with it. It's just not something she normally does, but maybe if I give her this beautiful Viseart shadow that's like world-class quality, maybe she'll enjoy it. Okay, now I wanna swatch these three because I feel like these three are very similar at least in the pan. So do I need all three? And I think the answer <laughs> is probably no. This one is almost like a duochrome. It's like a pink with a gold flip. So that's pretty original. That was this one here. So we'll keep that one since that's the only kind of duochrome one there is. This one is extra sparkly. Although this one, it's, hmm. Yeah, I think we'll choose this one. We have to choose one, so this will go here, okay. And then I wanna swatch this one here because I feel like this is really nice, but it's a little bit lackluster and I would always kind of reach for something else. So we'll put that over there. And let's look at these two again, because these I think were very, very similar. This sparkle is gorgeous, but it's too dark for me. Like I wouldn't normally use this on my mobile lid. Uh, and so this color would usually end up in my outer corner. And this is the same way, and I would probably use this as a matte, even though it has a sheen to it. I think this one is actually the more useful one for me in the context of how I use shadow. So we can also give this one away. I put this one back when I was rearranging, but I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be satisfied to say goodbye to it. That's, that's going, goodbye. What else can I get rid of? Let's look at these again. This one's special. This one is like a good brightening color because it's not too bright. This one is very pretty, very satiny, but I'm wondering if there's a lethal shadow that, that like I think is kind of similar to this tone, but I think the lethal shadow would be the one I'd choose if I was making a palette. Let me get that one out. I'm thinking of this one. I think it's called Lithium. That is just a gorgeous shadow. It looks really cool toned in the pan, but there's something warm to it. Yeah, I think out of those two shadows, Lithium has something special. It's like a wet look shadow. So I'm gonna get rid of this one because I have Lithium. Okay, look, we're actually getting somewhere. There's some empty space in here. And let's take a look at this one again. I have this shadow in my Lethal palette, which is called, let me see. This one is called Nymph. I'm gonna compare those two because Nymph is also like a really pretty shiny shadow, as is this. See, what I like about this is it has, this is just the perfect 
tone for me, this golden tone from Too Faced, this one's just like a little bit brighter. And it's nice, it's really brightening, but it's almost like too cold white for me. So I'm wondering if I should get rid of Nymph. Oh my gosh, that seems like a risk to me. I don't know why that seems like such a risk. Maybe it's because I don't have any other really bright shiny shadows. We'll come back to Nymph. I might declutter Nymph. We'll see. Let's take a look at the lethal charcoal shade here. Let's see, what shade is that? Rises from the ashes. So lethal rises from the ashes and Viseart charcoal. Let's see, so this will be the lethal shadow. So pretty. Then we have the Viseart charcoal. And we've got a softer charcoal, okay. Do I really need all three of those? The answer is probably no. <laughs> so which one am I willing to part with? Uh, I don't see this is hard for me because I really like doing gunmetal looks on stage and all three of these offer me something a little bit different. I think the two from Viseart are probably the most similar and maybe this one is maybe this one is the better tone for me will i miss this if it's gone that is a good question i don't know let's see how it goes with this one also from viseart question is if i have this from Viseart, I mean this one from Viseart and this one from Lethal. Do I need both of those? Let me take a look. See, I feel like the one from Lethal is even more blue based than the one from Viseart. Like even though Viseart's is blue based, it's there's something neutral to it, whereas this is very cool toned. Ah, oh, this is making it harder. I thought it was going to make it easier. Okay, instead of looking at the swatches for a second, I'm going to think about how I actually build a palette because gunmetal is very often one of the aspects of what I'm wearing on stage. So this is like a crucial color for me and having options is actually kind of nice. And here's what happens. A lot of times it depends on how much room I have in the palette. And so having different pan sizes <laughs> is actually kind of helpful for me. So I think because this is such an everyday, everyday look for me, then I think I'm gonna keep the options for now. I can always come back at a later date and declutter. You know what I think I wanna do? I wanna exchange this one for this one because I know that I often use these three together and so I'd like to keep them together. What else can I do? Let's compare Oh goodness, these two. Okay. They are different. <laughs> I think, what would I choose on an average day? That is the question. Okay. Am I going to remember that I had these nuances if I declutter one? No. So which one do I think is more useful to me? <sighs> I don't know. This one looks almost like it would fit more in over here. I'm wondering if I should compa be comparing this to some of these more yellow based ones. So. Yeah, I think that fits more. These fit more here together. All right, I'm just going to, I want to think about them in the right way. So let's try to get the undertones right. See, I guess I'll put you here and we'll slide you in over here somewhere-ish. Uh, you're actually lighter, so let's put you here. All right, let's try these three. Upon giving it some thought, I actually think this one fits more over here, which might seem strange, but let's make some space. And put this one 
here. The only reason I think it's important is because when I'm trying to figure things out, it's nice to have undertones kind of together or things that I would use together so that I can really see how they would fit in. And like when I think of these, okay, do these go well together? Well, now that I'm looking at them that way, I don't know. Hmm. No, I think maybe it really would work better over here. Because when I think of using it with this brown, yeah, I feel like those go better together. Okay, so now <laughs> we can swatch. Let's see, this is that one here. Nice big fat swatch of that. And we have this one and this one. Okay, and I feel like these are all different enough, these three are different enough to keep, but these two kind of are, are similar. So let's take a look, let's take these out for a second. Put these together just for fun. Let's watch this one. That was dusty. <laughs> But these shadows are infamous for swatching badly and then performing beautifully on the eye, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, I'm going to re-swatch these because for some reason just the act of swatching seems to really help me clear my mind. Okay, so we've got shadow number one and shadow number two. So shadow number one, shadow number two. And they are both a different depth. But Viseart blends out really well. So if I keep the darker one, then the lighter one can go somewhere else. I think I'm still going to be able to build the palettes I need to, even though that's not there. <laughs> let's check out this row of purples. So let's do it like this. Okay, I think that this really light one is maybe a little bit too light for me, and I think that this one would kind of serve the same purpose. So we can get this one to my mom. Maybe we'll end up giving her <laughs> a nine pan palette. Let's see, I'll put that there or here, I guess. Let's swatch the next two. Well, actually, we can do the rest of them in one fell swoop. Okay, all of those are super pretty, but I think, let's see, kept the, this, this here is this one. And that's a little cool compared to this one, so I think I can give this one to my mom. And then between these two, I think they're both so pretty, but I think this one would suit her really well. So we'll do that. Okay. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. The question is, do I need this and this? Yeah, I think those actually go really nicely together. That's, that's nice. I like that. I feel like this is, this is a nice combo. All right. Let's look at this lineup again. One of these is not like the other. <laughs> Where should this one go? Perhaps over here? Was this where it was in the first place? <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm going colorblind. Oh yeah, we compared those before. I remember this. Okay. Out of those two, I'm going to keep this one. So put this one over here. 
And now I want to swatch that little quint together and see if that's going together well. <laughs> this here really doesn't swatch very well, does it? Okay. You know, I kind of wonder how that works. Why it works so badly on the skin like this, yet it works so well on the eye. It kind of baffles me, to be honest. I feel like these three go pretty well together. And these, ah, does that work? Kinda, sorta. I'm almost wondering, this is almost like, this. it's like a, I don't know, it's got a mahogany element to it, but it's almost like a purple. So I'm wondering if that should go over here. Like this. That might be a little bit better because I feel like these can go together pretty well. If I take that one out, yeah, I feel like that works better. And I'm wondering if this actually fits in better. Over, ah, ah, over here. I like that. That's, that's, that's good. I think I would like to pull a switcheroo. While I was rearranging everything, I realized that some of these have stuff in common. So I wanted to kind of swatch them with each other to see if maybe I don't need all of them. So these are like the gunmetal shades that I typically build palettes for the stage with. And this is the first time I've ever seen them in this particular constellation. Apparently the swatching didn't want to get captured on camera, but luckily I caught it in time. We can discuss these now. These are the gunmetal shades I typically wear, and this is kind of a more neutral version of that. And I'm wondering if I can kind of combine them to make my own special variation of gunmetal. The answer is no. They can't really be combined to make my own sort of gunmetal. I feel like this is a great setup as it is. This is really cool, but once again, I have to think of my mom and how cool she would look in a gunmetal look. And I think maybe I should select some of these to give to her so she can do that. This is more blue based, so that's good for her. Let's see, this I stole from this side. Let's see, I think this version of it is better for her than what else would she need to do a great gunmetal look? She would need a lighter color. Hmm, this one or this one? I'm wondering if she'd like that. Because I know she doesn't like anything that's too, well, she doesn't like anything that's too stark, so maybe she'd like this better. Ooh. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. These gunmetal y kind of shades fit nicely into the little palette I'm making for her, so. <laughs> there goes those. So I have this. Can I get this down to three? I think I can. I think maybe I can just take this one out. Is this that color? That is a really pretty color. Ooh, yeah. But this one, I think, is just more something I would reach for. So that will go. Ooh, wow. I cut that down by quite a bit. Okay, so 
so I can still make my gunmetal looks. And you know what? Maybe I should just give away the cool blacks while I'm at it. Because for the most part, I'm going to want to wear warm stuff. So what about these two? Look at me go. Got my little gunmetal set up over there. I'm going to put these back here. Holy guacamole. We're really making some progress. Now, as for these two golds, I'm wondering if I really need both of those. This one from Sicily is super sparkly on the eye. It doesn't necessarily look like that one's swatched. They are different. But I feel like the Sicily one is more special. So I'll go like that. I think next we need to look over here. So let's swatch those again. This one looks unimpressive, I know, but it looks sparkly on the eye, so we're going to just let it be unimpressive on the hand. But the question is, would I choose this one over one of the other ones? Mm, good question, Stephanie. I feel like these two are maybe the most similar, but I don't know, I'm not, this one feels just like a little bit brighter, which is sometimes exactly what I need, depending on the time of year, so I think I'm okay leaving that that way for now. I think I'm actually satisfied with this for now, so I am going to clean all this up because we still have the colorful palette to look at. And here we have my colorful shadows. And right off the bat, I can get rid of these. I, for some reason, thought I would need them, but no. After going through everything we just did, I think I can safely say that these are not needed. So these will also go in the declutter bin. I can't believe a decision was easy <laughs> with neutral shadows. How is that even possible? Okay. So this is the rest of my colorful shadows, and oh, this is also a neutral that I think we can get rid of, although that is kind of a nice purpley gray. I really like the quality of these shadows, wherever they came from. I don't even know what they are, but that's just such a soft, oh, that's so pretty. No, neutral. It's a neutral. We don't need it in my colorful palette. <laughs> What I like about this little rainbow here is that it's kind of earthy, it's grounded, it's, it's the sorts of colors that I wear. If I wear color, it usually tends to have some sort of element of grayish or beige to it. <laughs> so I feel like these do that, especially when blended out on the eye. But let's compare these greens with this green and see if I really... Need. I don't even remember what I swatched where. Okay, these are the two ColourPop shadows, and this is that one. 
I think they're different enough to make sense keeping them. And let's, let's watch this one with those. Would that go? Kind of. But see, that doesn't have that earthy, even though it's got that blackened quality to it, it's a little bit bright for me, I say as I look at these. <laughs> uh, but there's something, there's just something really fun about these. But see, there's something fun about that too. So it kind of makes me wonder if I should keep that. I think I also want to keep it because I got it one time when I was shopping with my mom years ago. And so whenever I see it, it makes me really happy. But you know what can definitely go? These two shadows here. They're very pretty, but I feel like uh, they're a little too cool toned. This pewter tone is different, but you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to move this one to my neutrals palette. So it's going to come out of here because I think it makes more sense with my neutrals. Because this really should just be for kind of the more vivid colors. Now my question is, do I really need four of these shades? They are different, but are they different enough? Am I going to miss them when they're gone? That is the question. So let's do some swatching of these as well. Yeah, see, they're, <laughs> they're very different, but they're sparkly. And the, the texture of these shadows is a little bit heavy for what I go for nowadays. I tend to like a lighter texture. Oh, but man, are these pretty. Okay. I think I'm going to keep this one for now this one for now. I think I can get rid of this one. It's a little bit too neutral. And this one is also a little bit neutral. Let's see, maybe I'll move that to my neutrals palette. But I feel like these two have enough color in them to be considered colorful for me anyway. So we'll keep those. But let's see what happens. Let's, I need more. I need more space to swatch. Let's see. We got this color here, and then let's look at all these here. Okay, I feel like those are different enough, but I feel like. Let's see, is this that one? Go one more time. Yeah, this is that one. We're gonna get rid of this one and we're just gonna take this down to six. All right, let's swatch these pink ones together. I feel like those make sense, right? Yeah. But let's just see. Yeah, I think those those are different enough, I think. Because the Pat McGrath is more pink and this is more peach. Let's try these two together. So Pat McGrath is here and then Dose of Colors is here. Yeah, I feel like those those are different enough. But would I miss one? Let's see. I know that the Pat McGrath Pat makes my eyes look crazy green and these actually make my eyes look blue. So I feel like they serve a different enough purpose. This I know I'm not getting rid of. That's one of my favorites. In the minute it took me to get that palette, I have decided I can live without these two because I don't think I'm gonna miss them once they're gone. So we'll just put those over here. And now we're gonna look at the lethal shadows. Ooh, so pretty. And what I'm wondering is if I can just fit everything into this one palette, because that would actually be pretty cool to see all of my colors in one place all the time. I think I'm gonna try to do that.
I like the fact that all of my colorful shadows, except for my Cleona, those are my precious jewels and they cannot be stored the same way as these <laughs> because they fall apart. Um, I can store these like a book, like upright, but my Cleona shadows have to lay flat. So um, I can't put those in here. But I like the fact that all of my other colorful shadows are now in one palette. So anytime I need color, I can just go in here and get it. Now my question is, do I really need these two blues? Because both of them are very bright, which is not something I typically wear. Every once in a while I go for it, but I'm wondering if I really need both of them. And I think if I could only keep one, it would be this one. Especially because I have this, and I feel like maybe I could mix this with this maybe and get something yeah i feel like i don't need the middle shade so we'll take that out so i'm getting rid of surge even though it's gorgeous uh, i will try to rehome that is there anything else i wonder if i could put this in here because then it kind of is close to the greens my other thing is these two are neutrals i, I have enough neutrals i don't need those I think this is mustardy enough that it can be considered a color for me, so we'll keep that. I think it fits nice into the grungy appeal of these. Now, are there any other colors that I just don't need? First of all, I think what I'd like to do is slide these down and over like this, and this, like this, because I'd like to kind of I don't know. <laughs> that, that just feels better to me <laughs> to keep the greens with the greens. Is there anything else that looks like it's doubled? We do have two purples and they're both gorgeous. Both of these shadows are really nice and once again I've got a red toned and a blue toned purple. But since I got rid of my other blue toned I'd like to keep that. And where is other palette that I already sorted through. Okay, this is the other purple that we kept, so let's swatch that next to them and see if I also need to keep these purples. You know what? I feel like this is a neutral purple and these are bright purples. And I would like to keep both of them for now. I think that's okay. And you know what? I'm down to two palettes now. Well, three if you consider my other lethal shadows. Maybe I'll have to go a third round and put all of my neutral singles in one palette. But I feel like I'm satisfied with this palette for now. This is a colorful palette that I can use and enjoy and it's all in one place. This makes sense to me. And other than the purples, I don't feel like there's really any overlap. So I'm happy with this. So we went from eight eyeshadow palettes filled with single eyeshadow to one, two, three. And that is pretty cool. I think maybe the next step would be to compare my Lethal Cosmetics shadows to the remaining neutral shadows and see if there's any duplicates, things that I can get rid of, and maybe consolidate these into one palette. So that way I'll just have two palettes left. But honestly, my brain is just a little bit too <laughs> discombobulated at this point. I think I would be suffering from too much decision fatigue. I don't think I'd make wise decisions. So I'm going to save that for another day because I feel like I made some amazing progress today. Because look at all of the shadows that are leaving. First, we have these, which are going to my mother. Then we have these which will be going to a new home. They don't look as pretty and organized as they used to, but all the shimmers are here, all the mats are here. <laughs> That's at least something. And then we've also got all of these leaving. So I'll have to count them up for the final tally just to see how far we got. And look, this whole thing 
is now just an empty palette waiting to be cleaned. Although, I don't know, I kind of want to like spray, hairspray these on or something so that they stay forever because I kind of like all the rainbow colored specks. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about these because I put them in a separate place. I'm going to be doing a repotting video and these are part of that video. And afterwards, these shades are going to go into these two larger palettes. So right now, this is just kind of a holding area. I'm not really considering it another palette. Um, these two shades here are going to be integrated into my neutrals palette and these two as well. These two are going to be repotted and then given away. So that's what's happening with those. And then there's this palette here that's only holding my everyday shadows. And I had put it back in my everyday makeup drawer, which is why <laughs> I forgot about it. But um, it should live in my everyday makeup drawer because these are shadows that I use very often. But you know what I want to do? I want to take some of my Cleona shadows here and I want to take the two pastels out and now they fit into my everyday palette. So I want to put them in here because these are really easy Cleona shadows that I can wear. Some of them are a little bit trickier for me just because <laughs> I'm such a beige babe, but I like, let's see, that's going to go there, that's going to go here, and what I want to do is there was one shade in the Colorful palette that didn't fit into the Cleona palette before, and so I want to put it in there. Here, so this is now living with all its friends. It was lonely, so now I think it feels a little bit better, <laughs> and this I honestly don't think of it as, as a palette as of singles. I interact with this as if it is its own makeup palette. And so uh, I'm just going to consider it my Cleona palette. And like I said, I have to store this one separately because I have to lay it flat anytime I stand it up like my other ones. Uh, the last time I did that anyway, <laughs> one of the shadows completely shattered. So I keep this one stored like this. The rest of them I can store like books. So that just leaves me with this. If you are still watching, wow, that is dedication. <laughs> Thank you so much for sticking around with me. Maybe you can throw me a pair of eyeballs in the comments so that I know I'm not just talking to the void, which I kind of suspect is happening right now. Here's the final tally, which I'm going to read from my notes because I'm tired and I can't hold numbers in my head right now. 204 shadows are leaving me and 207 are staying. That's including my big neutral palette, my big colorful palette, and the handful of shadows in my everyday makeup drawer, plus my Lethal Cosmetics neutral palette and my Cleona multichromes. At some point, I think I'd even like to do a round three where I try to consolidate my lethal neutrals into that larger neutrals palette so I can have everything in one place. Let me know if you'd like to see that or if I should just declutter it off camera because I'm not sure how interesting it is to watch these very swatch heavy deliberation rich videos and I'm hoping that editing Stephanie will be able to cut out a lot of the mm, I don't know and the oh gosh what should I do and oh that's so pretty kind of clips. Next, I'll be tackling my powder cheek cosmetics and my eyeshadow palette. So make sure you like and subscribe in case you want to see that. After sorting through all of these individual shadows, I have a feeling that my eyeshadow palette declutter is going to be a breeze. That is not something I ever expected to hear myself say before beginning this whole decluttering process. But then again, I might also eat my words. We'll see. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. But even if you don't, I hope you have have a great week and we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style. <laughs>